I've had a bunch of questions lately about my years spent guiding and outfitting. What's better, horses or mules? Are you afraid of cougars? How about grizzlies? And then I got deeper ones. What are my thoughts on public game management? And then I even got controversial ones. Why do people hunt? What are your thoughts on wolves? All awesome questions, guys. But you aren't asking for facts. You're asking for my opinion on these things. So that's what you're gonna get. And true to form, I'm gonna nerd out on some of these guys. We might touch on politics, the meaning of life, hell, who knows. Today I'm gonna cover the question, when is it time to pull up the elk camp stakes and move to a different spot? If you like my videos, subscribe to the channel here and go to my website, pursuitwithcliff.com and jump on the newsletter. All right, let's jump right in here, guys. So in many of my videos, I talk about the value of knowing an area and the elk that live in that specific area. If you want to deep dive into that and how it all plays out, check out the video on the channel titled Why 5% of the Hunters Kill 95% of the Elk. I'll stick a link up somewhere up here. Guys that know an area really well do well over the years. Guys that bounce around struggle. That's the gist of it, all right? All right, so the logical question then is, when is it time to pop smoke and try a new spot? We know the value of intimately knowing an area, but what if I spend my time getting intimately familiar with the worst elk hunting spot on earth, right? That's what everybody's worries about when they go down this, uh, this train of logic. All right, so let's solve this enigma. So first, the micro question. During a hunt, when is it time to move. To some extent, you answer this question in the planning process, actually. If you have a six-day backpack hunt planned in the San Juan wilderness, and you're going to go six miles back in, right, the question is essentially answered for you already if that's a plan. The answer is never. If you think you're going to pack in three to five hours with your backpack, hunt out an area, then pack out, then you're going to go pack back into a new area all within six days with that type of hunting, good luck. It isn't going to work, guys, and it's not a reality. You are doing an all-in hunt, so pick a place to go into that has some elevation grade and different avenues to explore, okay? If you pack out on a hunt like that, there's an 80% percent plus chance your hunt is over. Keep that in your mind when you make that choice. I can't tell you how many guys convince themselves they're going to find greener pastures in a new spot and once they get back to the truck and they get that freaking heavy backpack off, greener pastures are back home on their couch, okay? That's the reality of what happens. But now if you're doing a road-based hunt with hike-in hunts, you can probably pull off checking two or even three completely different areas on a six, seven day hunt. So there's pros and cons to each hunting approach when you're talking about this ability to pack in and out of an area. Generally, to address the macro question of when to keep looking for a spot, when you really don't really, when you really don't already have a hunting spot yet, you know, you're new to hunting elk, you're new to hunting the state, the key there is to plan a nimble plan when you are at this stage. Day hunting from the roads with an expectation of a lot of hiking or packing into an area where you can cover a ton of country, that's key, guys, when you're at the early stages of just finding your spots. Now, topography makes a huge difference in the mountains, guys. You can backpack way into the back of a basin in the maroon bells and be stuck. You're not gonna physically jump from basins, right? That kind of plan is for once you have an established spot, not for when you are looking for your long-term spots as an elk hunter, okay? Now, if you got on a ridge in the bells you know, and you hiked out that ridge and you found a protected spot to camp, you might have 5x the area to hunt, right? Two to three basins to glass instead of just one. So those choices make a big difference. You know, to, to extend on that, if you're hunting mild terrain like the flat tops, you can generally hunt way more country from one location versus somewhere like the San Juans just a function of topography. None of those areas I just mentioned are necessarily better or worse than the other, but you have to plan where you hunt from accordingly. Is your plan really a plan to be able to hunt one spot, one basin, or is the plan that is going to give you options? When you're trying to find your established spots at first, as an elk hunter, you have to have options. I'll do a focus video on that in the future, but the gist is yes, you're gonna have to dedicate some time and effort to finding some general spots when you are new to elk hunting. You may get lucky the first year, it may take you a couple years. So guys, just get over that part of it. The one thing I will say, if you use some basic logic, you, know, you talk to folks, you call a biologist, you call a couple wardens, you do some scouting trips. If you do that, you have a really good chance of ending up in a spot that you can build on for several years, a really good chance of your first try guys. In these videos I'm gonna say things that lots of folks disagree with and I'm gonna be brief. There's not gonna be a shit pile of explanations so here's my promise to you guys. The topics with the most comments on these Q&A kind of shorter form videos I'm doing I'll dedicate individual long form videos to in the future. So 
If you have something to add or you hear something you disagree with, go for it in the comments. Tell me about it. Now, back to the micro question. When to move once you're in a spot? Probably one that you have some history in, right? So just the day-to-day -day hunt. When should you move? I only start to think about other locations during a hunt if, one, I know I have the logistical, logistical ability to move, and if it has been a solid 48 hours since I've seen fresh sign or glassed up animals. Before that, it's not even an option. Now, this is somewhat misleading because I am a sign hound for the first period of any hunt. I glass hard during the prime times, but also I spend mid days glassing timber, you know, looking at historical bedding areas, and I, and I still hunt edges with a focus on finding sign. I focus my time on indicator areas, right? Not necessarily areas where I can kill elk right now, but areas that would prove to me there are elk in the area if I find sign in them. Indicator areas to me would be any water source, right? So if I'm finding prints, muddy water and wallows, I can smell elk on a wallow, that kind of sign, right? Also, I check intersections in the trail. So at trail intersections, I'll do circles in there, just try to see you know, if I can find where some elk have crossed. I'll look up shoots right off of trails. You know, sometimes you'll be, you'll be going through a trail and you know an aspens and it'll be a bunch of grass and you can look up the little terrain shoots and you can see where elk have crossed and they may be two three hundred yards above the actual trail a lot of the times the elk aren't going to use the trail that humans use right but they'll they'll be moving parallel to it and you can see that in the grass a lot of the time elk can hold really tight but if they're there they will usually move a bit out of a tight spot at night you know they're leaving some sign at water edges of meadows you know just the very bit edge of a snow slide you know trail crossings all that stuff you'll find them because they're moving there at night if i find one fresh indicator you know a track i know is less than 24 hours old you know a slimy green pile of crap i consider that i'm into elk when elk are pressured in these these over-the-counter areas you really can equate volume of sign with volume of elk you might pick up one raghorn bull track on a creek right then the next day you get up above it and you start glassing back in there and you realize that 80 or 90 elk are holding tight on a little aspen bench it can be like a pinball game the elk are like the ball right if they settle into a spot where the paddle doesn't take a whack at them constantly they will just stick right there what they're trying to do is take care of themselves with as little exposure as possible a lot of guys tend to make a judgment on an area quicker than they should i've seen guys start to get negative on an area then after they've got negative they run into a blazing fresh bull track right but they still discount it you know a bull was just coming through ah oh, it's just a lone bull and they still decide to move it's kind of interesting it's like a psychological thing they have a they've come to a conclusion there's no elk there so even when they get contrary evidence they still just go with their first conclusion it's kind of an odd thing we do psychologically i see guys do that a lot and that equates to leaving an area prematurely i had so many guys over the years tell me that they exhausted every single piece of country in a 15 mile radius or a 20 mile radius on the third day of a hunt guys that's impossible if you're hunting these areas at the pace that you should. Now, if you really look for sign over a window and you just can't turn it up, then yeah, move. But here's the quick and dirty in my process before they do that. One, I hunt it like I would normally based on what I know, based on history or what I suspect from the habitat. If I'm not seeing elk during primetime glassing sessions and no obvious sign, I really start focusing on hunting sign, right, for 24, 48 hours. Now, if there is zilch, I will consider moving. Generally for me, this doesn't mean picking up camp and completely moving. However, that is a function of the country I hunted a lot in the flat tops. It's fairly easy to just hunt a further section from camp. And all that means is hiking for an hour in the dark or a couple hours in the dark to a new area. If your logistics of moving are more minimal, you're day hiking to one spot to the next, you're day glassing from the truck, then tighten up all these timelines I mentioned and you'll get yourself into fresh elk eventually. Guys, I hope that was helpful and I hope it gives you kind of a framework to make a decision off of. Guys, if any of you have additional insight on when and how you choose to move locations, I wanna hear about it, so drop me a comment, comment below. Guys, my next Q&A video like this is going to answer the question, why do we hunt? So I'm jumping to an easy one, right? Well, I'll flesh it out in that video and you guys can hear my opinion. Guys, if you like these videos, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot.